Okay, I welcome all of you. We are going to start about vitamin soon. Please inform your colleague that we have started our class. Is that the chat box? So this topic is very interesting and it is being uh, frequently asked in your exam. It is useful in all the subjects in uh, pharmacology, in community medicine, in medicine, in pediatrics, this topic vitamins. This is very useful. There are uh, two types of vitamins. As you know, there are two types of vitamins. Can you write down in chat box which are the broad group of vitamin? Broad groups, not the names of vitamin, but which are the broad groups of vitamin? Which are two main groups of vitamin? Please write down in chat box. Which are two main groups of vitamin? Write down in chat box. So this topic is very much useful in many subjects in your biochemistry, in your pharmacology, in uh, medicine, pediatric, community medicine, in obstetrics also. So nutrition is universal subject. It is there in many subjects of medical science. What are two main groups of vitamin? Answer in chat box. Two main groups of vitamin. What are two main groups of vitamin? Write down in chat box. Yes, I am getting reply. Water soluble and repeat soluble vitamin. Yes, fat soluble and water soluble. Yes, these are two main group of vitamin. So today we are going to discuss about uh, fat soluble vitamin. Okay, write down in chat box what are fat soluble vitamin? Which are fat soluble vitamin? Write down in chat box which are fat soluble vitamins. So I have got reply from so many students about types of vitamin. So basic, you know basically about types of vitamin. Yes, A, D, E, K. Yes, very nice. So now we are going to start with vitamin A. So vitamin A, it is fat soluble vitamin. Let me take the pointer. So it is uh, a group of fat soluble vitamin. There are different names, there are different chemical forms of the vitamin. One is retinol, it is alcohol form. So alcohol, retinol. Then aldehyde is retinal. Aldehyde, it is retinal and acid is retinoic acid. So three forms of the vitamin, retinol, retinal and retinoic acid. So uh, these are according to their chemical structures. These are according to their chemical structures. Okay, so I have made the slide visible to you. Now sources of vitamin A. Uh, so there are two sources mainly animal source and plant source. So animal source includes cod liver oil, whole milk or butter and beef. So major sources cod liver oil in case of the vitamin A. 
then plant source as you know carrots since childhood you have been taught that eat lots of carrots tomato it will uh, going to protect your eyes because vitamin a is useful for your eyes so carrots tomatoes nowadays season of mangoes mangoes papaya spinach and broccoli so here you can see in photograph broccoli and then carrots then this fruits then these are the sources of vitamin b here so you can remember these sources again i repeat uh, major animal sources cod liver oil apart from this whole milk and butter beef carrots spinach mangoes papaya broccoli and spinach functions of vitamin most important function is for vision as you know that vitamin a is required for production of rhodopsin so this is the protein which is required for production uh, for which vitamin a is required so if there is deficiency of vitamin there can be visual impairment and you may be knowing that a group of the disease in eyes because of the vitamin a deficiency that is xeropthalmia so vitamin is also useful in vision in dim light it is useful in vision vision in dim light so one thing you have to differentiate that uh, vitamin a is useful for vision so uh, um, and second thing is refractive error so there is nothing to uh, be associated with refractive error and vitamin a now many a times you hear that uh, if you take lot of vitamin a then it is going to protect your uh, eyes from refractive errors i mean to say from spectacles so that is nothing that is wrong so vitamin a is only a source of energy for vision that is for generation of the rhodopsin it is not going to protect your refractive error so that these are two different things refractive having vision that is visual acuity uh, having vision and visual acuity these both are two different things so apart from vision it is also required for the regulation of the gene expression in gene transcription as well as in protein synthesis vitamin a is involved in protein synthesis second most important role is immunity apart from vision immunity it, it is going to uh, protect your skin and mucous membrane skin and mucus as well as production of the lymphocyte so for immunity this vitamin a has major role for growth and development is required for embryonic development as well as for production of the growth hormone in adult in embryo for overall in general embryonic development and in case of the adult is it is required for production of the growth hormone as well as it is also needed for the production of the rpc so important function vision then immunity vision and immunity two most important function then growth and development rpc production regulation of the gene expression these are other functions so deficiency of vitamin a as you know that it will lead to two types of the manifestation ocular manifestation these are related to eyes and extra ocular manifestation means these are uh, the manifestations which are beyond eyes means other than eyes in other organs in other system in other body parts manifestations these are extra ocular so first of all ocular manifestations so it will lead to night blindness first symptom of the vitamin a deficiency is night blindness as we have seen that it is required in dim vision dim vision so dim light vision so in night as you know that there is dim light and because of the vitamin a deficiency there can be night blindness if you remember the old movie uh, of uh, uh, this rishi kapoor bol rada bol in that movie also uh, kadar khan has uh, has been shown to be having the dim light uh, low vision in case of the night in evening so that is one of the example of night blindness the nectalopia conjunctival xerosis so these are the range of xerophthalmia all range of xerophthalmia all these are ranges of xerophthalmia and starting from night blindness then conjunctiva is affected there is xerosis there is muddy conjunctiva then bitter spots on the eye there can be bitter spots on the eye ophthalmologist can easily diagnose it corneal xerosis and keratomalacia so all are ocular manifestation which is known as which this group are known as xerophthalmia so xerophthalmia is the group of manifestation starting from night blindness to keratomalacia in between conjunctival xerosis bitter spots corneal xerosis and keratomalacia so these are ocular manifestation and second thing is extraocular manifestation as we know 
vitamin a has role in immunity so deficiency of the vitamin a will lead to impaired immunity follicular hyperkeratosis is in skin and anorexia anorexia follicular hyperkeratosis and impaired immunity these are extraocular manifestation so what are the uses therapeutic uses of vitamin a that is in case of the retinitis pigmentosa and then here in case of the retinitis pigmentosa what happens that there is reduced uh, it, uh, loss of retinal function so this vitamin a but here if patient is taking vitamin a for this purpose it could be discontinued in pregnancy because it will be harmful to fetus then second is acute promyelocytic leukemia here all trans retinoic acid it will restore the normal differentiation and some skin or disorder used to treat the psoriasis and severe acne so vitamin a is uh, most commonly used in skin skin as well as in case of the ophthalmology so in skin there is psoriasis and severe acne in case of the acne it is added thing apart from the specific treatment of the acne vitamin a is added so this is the assessment of the deficiency by who uh, here criteria for no need to remember this prevalence night blindness without spots corneal xerosis then this keratomalacia corneal ulcer serum retinol so prevalence here prevalence if more than 1% prevalence is there and of night blindness then vitamin a deficiency in population is there so accordingly 0.5% for without spot for corneal xerosis more than 0.01% for corneal ulcer more than 0.05% and if serum retinal level less than 10 microgram per deciliter if such level is there in more than 5% of the population and vitamin a deficiency can be there causes of deficiency so most common is age so in children vitamin a deficiency can be there in children age 1 to 3 1 to even 1 to 5 year children so what are the causes of uh, deficiency in children early weaning of the breast milk early weaning as you know that uh, there is exclusive breastfeeding criteria that at, uh, up to 6 months only and only breastfeeding should be given and uh, uh, after 6 months supplementary feeding should be given but breastfeeding is to be continued for 2 years at least 2 years if there is early weaning it can lead to vitamin a deficiency but breastfeeding contains vitamin a deficient vitamin a protein energy malnutrition then faulty feeding practices giving wrong type of the food giving uh, uh, sorry i meant to say, give, say that uh, wrong type of the food as well as having the less frequency of the feeding so these are example of faulty feeding technique giving the formula fed milk and uh, that top feeding uh, so these are wrong faulty technique then some infections during childhood like diarrhea and measles particularly this measles it may lead to vitamin a deficiency so if any child is having measles uh, along with the treatment of the measles vitamin a is also given in the supplementation diarrhea it can also lead to vitamin a deficiency consumption of skimmed milk that is artificial that milk uh, that where, where uh, that uh, uh, part that that part uh, uh, in uh, dairy which, that is prepared skim milk is prepared in dairy which, which, which is devoid of vitamin a as well as other nutrients so treatment of vitamin a deficiency is to give supplementation as well as to give injection here oral retinal famitate oral retinal lecithate injection injection is less commonly used most commonly oral treatment is given so administration of the vitamin a each of these can be one of the them can be given on two successive days so this is the photograph which is showing you the vitamin a preparation it is some in form of the capsules so it is oily capsule and uh, in case of the measles also it is given on two successive days vitamin a if the symptoms are not relieved once a few weeks so weekly it can be given it is not to be given daily so prevention of the vitamin a there are three types of the action short term action medium term action and long term action short term medium term and long term action so short term include large dose of the vitamin a orally so here you can see in photograph vitamin a is to be given quick organization and with minimum infrastructure mainly to remember large dose of vitamin a orally short term action then vitamin a prophylaxis it is in short term action as you know that in uh, our, our vitamin a prophylaxis program uh, at nine month two lakh international unit of the vitamin a is given two lakh international unit means it is two ml 
2 lakh means it is 2 ml so with the help of the special plastic spoon 2 ml of the vitamin a is given at age of the 9 month along with dose of the mr and then every 6 months till 5 years of age 1 lakh international unit vitamin is given so that is 1 ml 1 lakh international unit is 1 ml of the vitamin can you write down in chat box so if the child is started vitamin a at the age of the 9 month till he becomes up to 5 years how many total how many total doses of vitamin a he will take how many total doses of vitamin a he will the child will take write down in chat box as we have discussed that at the 9 month vitamin a is started and it is continued every 6 month till age of the 5 years so in uh, uh, it is given in february and august it is given in february and august so i am not asking in uh, terms of the international unit only number how many total doses uh, some one student is saying yes there is correction that at the age of the 9 month there is 2 1 lakh unit and at the age of uh, then every every 6 month 2 lakh unit is given yes you are very correct i appreciate tejas at the age of 9 month 1 lakh international unit is given that is 1 ml then every 6 month 2 lakh international unit is given so how many total doses just number of doses not in in terms of the ml or not in terms of the unit yes i am getting reply 17 10 ml 9 doses 9 doses is that correct 9 doses is is anybody agree with that 17 in terms of unit 9 doses is correct yes at the age of 9 month that is one dose correct right? then uh, up to 5 years every year two doses two doses so means in four in four years two doses means eight doses from second year onwards there are eight doses and it will lead to total nine doses okay so write down in chat box what are the sources of vitamin a write down in chat box what are sources of vitamin a just a second what are the sources of vitamin a write down in chat box green leafy vegetable then <coughs> carrot yes we have discuss about sources animal sources like cod liver oil very nice cod liver oil spinach mango banana carrot milk papaya fish liver oil yes very nice okay so we are moving further medium term action for prevention of the vitamin a fortification of the food as you know that food fortification means food making enriched with vitamin a uh, another example of food fortification is iodine that is iodized salt adding of the iodine into salt is food fortification so here food fortification with vitamin a and most commonly dalda ghee and dalda ghee is used for food fortification and dalda ghee vitamin a is added other food like uh, sugar salt tea and that can be dried skim milk then margarine then uh, most commonly this dalda ghee vegetable ghee in which the vitamin a is added long term modific long term action for prevention of the vitamin deficiency is reduction or elimination of the contributory factor like uh, diarrhea like measles Uh, like protein energy malnutrition like proper breastfeeding technique so these are the factors which are uh, to be corrected then consumption of the vitamin a rich food you have already told about the sources of vitamin a rich promotion of the breastfeeding environmental hygiene for any prevention of the any nutritional deficiency environmental hygiene because it will prevent infection as, as we have seen that one of the important uh, 
cause of vitamin deficiency is infection, diarrhea, and measles. Uh, immunization for the measles because measles lead to uh, vitamin deficiency and treatment of diarrhea and other infection, health services like mother and child services, uh, social and health education, and one efficient primary health care services. So, all these, these things are being practiced. Now, we have efficient primary health care services, PHC, and this. Uh, sub centers, health and wellness center, we are very efficient. Maternal and child nutrition services are very efficient in India also in terms of this uh, delivering services through Mamta sessions, through Anganwadi, through ICDS program. So these are all long term actions. So that was all about vitamin A. Now another fat soluble vitamin that is vitamin D. So uh, forms of the vitamin D uh, here. Uh, as we know that vitamin A is retinol, so vitamin D, it is cholecalciferol, it is cholecalciferol. And uh, apart, as you can see that vitamin A E is considered as tocopherol, and vitamin K is phytonamenoquinone phytoma, and menaquinone. Menaquinone is written later on. So we are going to discuss about this cholecalciferol. So it is a fat soluble vitamin and it is sunshine vitamin. As you know that uh, since childhood you are learning that the source of vitamin D is sun, sunlight, but it is not absolutely correct. Uh, sunlight doesn't give vitamin D. Vitamin D is synthesized below our skin, below epidermis. So sun, in presence of sunlight, so sunlight helps to synthesize vitamin D in our uh, skin. So it is formed in the skin by a photochemical reaction in presence of sun. So it is called as sunshine vitamin. So there are forms of the vitamin D, D1, D2, D3, D4, and D5. And vitamin D1, it is, uh, see, all are secosteroids, broken open steroids. So ergosterol, ergocalciferol is vitamin D2, cholecalciferol is vitamin D3, vitamin D1 is ergosterol. Vitamin D2 or ergocalciferol, then this uh, vitamin D3 is cholecalciferol, then this vitamin D4 is D2 dihydroxy ergocalciferol, and this D5 is cetacalciferol. So, most commonly, you can remember this name only cholecalciferol. There is 7D hydroxy cholesterol, 7D hydroxy cholesterol, it is vitamin, uh, animal vitamin. Then, plant vitamin is ergocalciferol. <coughs> So metabolism of this vitamin, it is absorbed from the small intestine and bile is essential for the metabolism of this vitamin. It enters the circulation through limb bound to alpha globulin and largely stored in liver. Main, main storage of any nutrition is in liver, not only in vitamin D. So blood, uh, this 25 dihydroxy cholecalciferol level is accepted way to determine the vitamin D nutritional status. Formation of vitamin D, as you can see in photograph, that in presence of the sunlight under skin, under skin, it is synthesized. That is, we are going to see with the help of this photograph. So, major source is, uh, it is not source, it is wrongly termed not source, but it is the stimulator factor. So, below the skin, this is the layer of the skin, this is the layer of the skin. 7D hydroxy cholesterol is converted to cholecalciferol, that is vitamin D3. Under the effect of sunlight, 7D hydroxy cholesterol is converted to cholecalciferol, that is vitamin D3 in liver. So, minor sources are dietary intake, like vitamin D3 in form of the fish, meat, vitamin supplements, vitamin D2. Then, from liver, it is converted to 25 dihydroxy vitamin D3 into kidney and to finally to 125 dihydroxy vitamin D3. So cholecalciferol, then this 25 dihydroxy vitamin D3 and 125 dihydroxy vitamin D3. So liver and kidney play a major role in conversion and also skin. <coughs> Absorption of vitamin D3, it is synthesized in the sebaceous gland of the skin and secreted into the surface and reabsorbed into epidermis. And uh, we are not going into the detail of how much of this metabolism functions. These are very important. It is a biologically active compound is calcitriol 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol. It regulates the plasma level of calcium and phosphate. So major role, vitamin D has a major role in regulation of the calcium and phosphate. So what are the actions on intestine? Actions of vitamin D in intestine. It, 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 it leads to the absorption of calcium and phosphate. So in 
uh, in in this intestine it will lead to increase the absorption of calcium and phosphate so in case of the hypocalcemia hypocalcemia this action can occur action on the bone it stimulates the bone calcium uptake for the deposition as calcium phosphate so calcium is deposited in bone under the effect of vitamin d then action on kidney it minimizes calcium and phosphate excretion minimizes calcium and phosphate excretion and enhances reabsorption so again i repeat action on intestine action on bone and action on kidney so in action on intestine increase absorption of calcium and phosphate in action on bone includes increase deposition of the calcium on bone and action on kidney includes uh, it, it minimizes calcium and phosphate excretion sources of vitamin d as we have seen that uh, vitamin d is synthesized below skin under the effect of sunlight but some of the artificial sources some of the natural other natural sources as well as artificial sources are there cod liver oil is natural source so some fish like catfish salmon fish uh, all of the names of fish uh, we are not fish eater so we don't do not know about this names very much then egg also contain 28 international unit of the vitamin d so all these are uh, natural sources of vitamin d so again you can see this fortified vitamin d sources this is the major dietary source uh, like fortified food like we have seen in case of the vitamin a so milk can be fortified soya milk yogurt all this food can be bread can be fortified with vitamin d2 or d3 so these are artificial sources Fortified milk pro typically provides hundred unit per glass. These are the reference value for infant, children, adult. No need to remember all this value. Deficiency of vitamin D. As we know that vitamin D is important for uh, bones as it leads to the mineralization. Calcium is deposited. We have seen an action on bone. It leads to the calcium deposition in bones. So deficiency of this vitamin D in case of the children, it will lead to rickets. In adults, it will lead to osteomalacia. So in children, rickets and in adults, osteomalacia, vitamin D deficiency. And osteoporosis also there in adult. So because of the osteoporosis, many a times there can be spontaneous fracture. Osteoporosis means there will be multiple holes in the bone. And there is decalcification of the bone. Calcium will be calcium will be deep whatever calcium is deposited that is decalcified so that bone become weak and there can be spontaneous fracture without any uh, injury so that is that is commonly seen because of the osteoporosis so that is the photograph of rickett bow leg you can see that bow legs and this is a rickettic rosary in x-ray rickettic rosary you can see rickettic rosary so symptoms of uh, rickets one of the symptom we have seen sign that is bow leg then bone pain there can be diffuse bone pain muscle weakness the symptoms can be also low calcium numbness around the mouth around the mouth there can be numbness numbness of the extremities khali chidi jay gujarati mein that is numbness spasm of the hands or feet these are all symptoms of ricket again you can see bow legs in ricket bow legs here photograph of this x-ray of the bow leg osteomalacia it is characterized by insufficient mineralization or increased osteoporosis here also bone pain and frequent fracture uh, so to diagnose this osteomalacia uh, biochemical parameter like serum alkaline phosphate as well as uh, calcium level can be helpful again photographs so prevention of deficiency uh, as we know that our parents grandparents used to take children early uh, children of less than 5 years of age less than 10 years of age to the sunlight so exposure of the children to sun sign <coughs> sunlight it is very much useful particularly in early morning in winter morning and then periodic dosing of the uh, dosing of the young children as prophylaxis uh, vitamin a is given as prophylaxis vitamin d is not there in prophylaxis of, uh, of uh, nutritional prophylaxis program fortification of the food especially milk with the vitamin d it can be also helpful vitamin d supplementation there are vitamin d tablets available <coughs> vitamin d and calcium combination tablets are also available so 
you may have observed uh, many old age person of your relatives as well as in nearby area that vitamin d and calcium supplementation are taken to prevent osteomalacia and osteoporosis so this is interesting vitamin d supplementation electron micrograph of the bone of the osteomalacia before this is before this is before and this is after treatment with the vitamin d here in in uh, electron microscope you can see that because of the vitamin d deficiency there are signs of the osteomalacia and osteoporosis osteoporosis osteomalacia here solid uh, calcification of the bone this is solid calcification of the bone after vitamin d supplementation is there so that was about vitamin a and vitamin d we will continue with vitamin e and k also we will finish this fat soluble vitamin today so vitamin e this is also fat soluble anti antioxidant vitamin in in advertisement of uh, uh, many products for for skin care as well as for hair care uh, you may have seen that it is with vitamin e added vitamin e is added so antioxidant and apart from this it is also anti fertility action so it is anti fertility vitamin vitamin e the name is tocopherol and uh, it is fat soluble antioxidant uh, other names ecos uh, are tetranoids for tocopherol just remember this tocopherol functions of vitamin e is it is antioxidant vitamin it depicts on cell, cell signal transduction and induce uh, it influences il2 interleukin 2 production which is critical for the t cell proliferation and differentiation t cells are the cells of immunity so it is critical for il2 production maintenance of the cell membrane structure and integrity as you know that our cell membrane uh, integrity of cell membrane should be maintained to protect the cell so the, uh, that integrity is maintained by vitamin a it, uh, it is also helpful in reduction of the immunosuppressive prostaglandin e2 action so you can see that it protects cell membrane and tissue damage uh, it from the oxidation so vitamin e is antioxidant so in in many skin care products vitamin e is used to protect the cell membrane and tissue damage so it protects the skin so you may you you can observe in your uh, skin care products if you have that uh, skin care products in that you can imami or something like that vitamin e is there it aids in the formation of the red cell red cell production use of the vitamin k it promotes the function of the healthy circulatory system <coughs> rda is recommended daily allowance so role of vitamin a it is again that is shown by this membrane that it protects the cell membrane it protects the cell membrane and antioxidant function other functions it protect rbc from hemolysis that is the same as protection of the cell membrane uh, rbc cell membrane is also protected so hemolysis is prevented it increase synthesis of the heme increase synthesis of the heme uh, as well as it prevents this uh, perioxidation of the pufa pufa is polyunsaturated fatty acid it is also required for maintenance of the germinal epithelium <coughs> it prevent oxidation of vitamin a and protein so in that way it is useful for oxidation of the vitamin a required for the storage of the creatine <coughs> it is required for optimum absorption of the vitamin sorry amino acid so amino acid absorption is also increased with the help of the vitamin e it is also required for the proper synthesis of the nucleic acid it protects liver from toxic compound so so many functions of the vitamin e apart from this uh, antioxidant so two major function antioxidant function and second major function is to maintain the integrity of the skin and mucous membrane sources of vitamin e these are vegetable oils main vegetable oil like palm oil soybean oil corn oil olive oil then nuts eggs kiwi fruit kiwi fruit you know that it is australian fruit wheat germ whole grain fish peanut butter green leafy vegetable then fortified breakfast cereal these are also good sources of vitamin e again you can see the sources wheat germ oil sunflower oil and some of the common sources what we use soybean oil olive oil peanuts corn soybean coconut tomatoes these are sources of 
these are all sources. K rods, these are all sources. Dietary reference value for adult male 10 milligram per day, female 8 milligram per day. This is in pregnancy and lactation. So deficiency of this vitamin E, it leads to the uh, function, dysfunction of the erythrocyte membrane. So that it because it uh, so that it will lead to the fragility and it will lead to hemolysis. Then some neurological problem due to poor look and blindness, muscle weakness. So these are because of the deficiency as well as it will damage skin and mucous membrane because of deficiency damage to skin and mucous membrane can occur. So vitamin E su supplementation is indicated for those who cannot absorb fat, anyone with cystic fibrosis. So because of this disease, for the gastrectomy, Crohn's disease, pancreatic insufficiency, vitamin E cannot be absorbed. So in that persons, vitamin E further supplementation can be required. So commercial preparation of the vitamin E are available. Synthetic, fully synthetic, semi-synthetic sources. These are commercial preparation which are available. This in this in this form of the tablet. So vitamin A and vitamin E, e these capsules look like this. Vitamin A is also similar to this. Vitamin E is also similar to this. So by label you can present. As well as many uh, companies made this product in other colors. So apart from the color and label, mainly from label you can identify vitamin E and vitamin A uh, preparations. <coughs> So apart from this, vitamin A can be also useful in uh, in case of the skin cream, what we have already discussed, then in Alzheimer's disease, during pregnancy, to reduce the oxidative stress because it is antioxidant. In case of the cancer, research is going on, but it is inclusive. Cataract, again, doubtful action, age-related macular degeneration, no effect, Parkinson's disease. So mainly on skincare products. For skincare products, it is vitamin A in Alzheimer's disease, vitamin E is useful so last is vitamin k last is vitamin k but before that let me ask some question what are the deficiency symptoms of vitamin d because of vitamin d what deficiencies can occur vitamin d vitamin d deficiencies lead to which symptoms write down in chat box vitamin d deficiencies lead to which symptoms Yes, I'm getting reply, rickets, then ricketic rosary, osteoporosis, very nice. Ricketes, osteoporosis, yes. Uh, now, what are the symptoms and signs of vitamin A deficiency? Vitamin A deficiency will lead to which symptoms and signs? I'm getting reply of vitamin D, ricketes. Osteoporosis, osteomalacia. Now, write down about vitamin A deficiency. What are the signs and symptoms of vitamin A deficiency? Yes, night blindness. Then Blindness, particularly night blindness. Apart from night blindness, battered spots. Muscle weakness, bow leg, that was, that was because of vitamin D. Numbness, yes, xerophthalmia, keratomalacia, anorexia, night blindness, very nice. So, you are going good. You all are going good. Okay, what is the schedule of vitamin A prophylaxis? When vitamin A prophylaxis is given? At which age and how many units? What is schedule of vitamin A prophylaxis? At which age and how many units it is given? Or you can write down in terms of ML. Yes, nine month, one lakh unit. Then, very right, started at 9 months, yes, 1 lakh unit, then, then 2 lakh unit, then 10, 2 lakh unit, till 5 years, yes, but just one thing is missing, 9 months, 1 lakh unit, 
and then every six months till five years of age, two lakh unit. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So now we are going to see about vitamin K. Vitamin K. So that is uh, also fat soluble vitamin. It is also blood clotting factor. If you remember, thirteen blood clotting factors are there. Among which vitamin K is also important blood clotting factor. And so remember K for coagulation. So K for co coagulation in German. The German spelling of the coagulation is like that. So one of the important role is itself its name K for coagulation. It is required in blood clotting. Deficiency of vitamin K is rare and it is heat stable. So there are two forms: natural form and synthetic form. So natural form is phylloquinone and menaquinone, and synthetic form is menadione. So this is phylloquinone that is also known as vitamin K1, and menadione it is also known as vitamin K2. So difference between two vitamins. So this vitamin K K1 is uh, obtained from the leaves of the green plant. And vitamin K two is synthesized by intestinal bacteria. And deficiency is rare. No need to understand about this uh, chain or chemical structure. And deficiency occurs when intestine are extremely damaged. So because here intestinal bacteria synthesize this vitamin K two. So in this vitamin in this vitamin K synthesis intestinal normal flora. It is very much. It is having the role. So. Just Make me slide visible. Okay. So whenever there is a deficiency of the intestinal flora, in case of the intestine is extremely damaged, in that condition, vitamin K two deficiency can be observed. Absorption and storage. Absorption of the vitamin intestine occurs by chylomicron, which is dependent on the bile salt, and it is transported along with the LDL. You may be You, you are aware of this LDL, low density lipoprotein in plasma. So absorption along, uh, along and transported along with the LDL in plasma. It is stored mainly in liver, as you know that most of the storage liver is the storehouse. Liver is also the uh, organ of the metabolism as well as storehouse. So all the excess nutrient can be stored in liver, as you know that uh, glucose and uh, in form of the glycogen is stored in liver. Biochemical function, as you know, that it is required mainly for coagulation, clotting. So for clotting, this is first function is related to clotting. In clotting, there is one terminology: post-translation modification. Post-translation modification of the coagulation factor like factor two, factor seven, factor nine, and factor ten. So for two, seven, nine, and ten, post-translation modification for that vitamin K is required. You can remember like the phone number two seven nine ten, two seven nine ten. So that is how you can remember the number of the factor for which post translation. As you know that uh, translation, translation is the synthesis of the protein. So after translation, whatever the modification is there, that is called post translation modification. And this post translation modification example by which gamma carboxylation of the glutamate residue. You can just remember in easy way for post-translation modification of factors like two, seven, nine, and ten. Vitamin K is required. That is the role in clotting. It is required for the carboxylation of the osteocalcin, which helps in the bone for retention of the calcium. And it is also involved in ETC, electron transport chain. In in eleventh and twelfth uh, standard, you have studied this electron transport chain as well as in biochemistry. For oxidative phosphorylation, it is required. So this is the photograph how vitamin K benefit blood clotting process. So sources of vitamin K K1 you can see the here also some green leafy vegetable, cabbage, then this broccoli, uh, so then flower, some fruits, papaya, etc., <clears throat> pineapple. So this sources of what phylloquinone that is the natural major dietary form of the vitamin K. It is obtained from the green leafy vegetables, spinach and lettuce. Other sources like cauliflower, brassica vegetables, cabbage, so sprout, wheat bran, organ meat, fruits such as avocado. Then this uh, kiwi fruit, banana, uh, cow milk, meat. The other dairy product, eggs. Then uh, soya bean. So these are sources of vitamin K1. Then vitamin K2. It is from obtained from chicken. 
egg yolk butter cow uh, and cheese so mainly here non vegetarian sources of vitamin k2 are there so this is the age and dose no need to remember this dose doses deficiency deficiency of vitamin k as yes, you know that vitamin k is important for clotting so it will lead to hemorrhage so these are the photograph of the newborn baby admitted with the hemorrhage vitamin k deficiency may be there in newborn so as you know that after birth vitamin k injection is given to each and every newborn to prevent what this uh, deficiency and because of that to prevent the hemorrhage vitamin k related hemorrhage so remember well that vitamin k is important for clotting and deficiency will lead to hemorrhage particularly in newborn because they are deficient and for that vitamin k injection is given so early vitamin k deficiency it will lead to cephal hematoma intracranial and intrathoracic and intraabdominal hemorrhage so then uh, this vitamin k deficiency will lead to also gastrointestinal so these are the common sites of bleeding here in this column common sites of bleeding are there gastrointestinal skin nasal and then intracranial hemorrhage skin gastrointestinal disease and late vitamin k deficiency vitamin k deficiency can also occur because of the sterile gut as we have seen that in case of the newborn there are no bacteria we have seen that uh, vitamin k2 it is synthesized by bacteria in newborn there are no intestinal bacteria so that there is no vitamin k and so there is that is total gut and in newborn infant there is vitamin k deficiency and we have already discussed that to prevent this vitamin k deficiency vitamin k injections are given then because of the faulty absorption that is because of the lack of the bile salt as we have seen in absorption that the bile salts are important for vitamin k absorption loss of vitamin in fishes because of the diarrheal disease administration of the antibiotic like uh, it will lead to killing of the intestinal flora as we know that intestinal flora is important for vitamin k synthesis so again i repeat deficiency is because of the sterile gut faulty absorption loss of the vitamin in fishes administration of the antibiotic and it is characterized by lack of active prothrombin in circulation individual bleed profusely we have seen that hemorrhage can occur in newborn and clotting time ct is increased so that is all about uh, all vitamin that are uh, fat soluble vitamin fat soluble vitamin and uh, we will i think at today's session or should we continue should we continue or end i can take another topic that is about local anesthetic and counter irritants if you are in the one in chat box should we continue for 10 minutes okay so i'm getting reply to continue somebody are saying end just uh, for 5 minutes for 5 minutes only okay i'm going to share you about this local anesthetic just let me share the screen okay so local anesthetics and counter irritant it is also part of your syllabus we will we will discuss for 5 minutes so, so so there is first of all difference between general anesthesia and local anesthesia so general anesthesia it is on cns let me select pointer again i have to select the pointer every time so 
so difference between general anesthesia and local anesthesia general anesthesia acts on the cns local anesthesia acts on the peripheral nerve that is the major difference so site of the action so as we know that it is general so it includes whole body to the area suppose you are giving local anesthesia to any restricted to any area then consciousness here in general anesthesia it is lost here consciousness is unaltered means patient is conscious in local anesthesia patient is conscious vital function care should be essential care of the vital function like heart like brain like lung so the care of this function is essential which uh, anesthetists are doing in case of the surgery here usually there is no loss of consciousness so usually care of this vital function is not needed as in case of the general anesthesia physiological trepas is high physiological stress is high physiological stress is low for a healthy patient for poor health patient for poor health patient those who have some comorbidities this general anesthesia can be risky but local anesthesia can be safer in case of the uncooperative patient use of the general anesthesia is possible but here in case of the uncooperative patient local anesthesia cannot be possible for my major surgery this general anesthesia is preferred for major surgery so for major of surgery like abdominal surgery so on, uh, only general anesthesia is to be preferred no local anesthesia cannot be used in case of the minor surgery like surgery over the hand surgery over the feet uh, even for a surgery of the hernia local anesthesia can be preferred so here there is reversible block with impulse conduction it provide transient loss of the sensation over the area we are talking about the local anesthesia it provide transient loss of the sensation suppose we are applying the uh, local anesthesia towards over the finger it will lead to transient loss of sensation over the finger so it is useful for performing minor surgery it does not cause loss of the consciousness or do not require proper maintenance of the vital function during surgery we are not interested in history just remember that first local anesthetic local anesthetic uh, which was there identified as cocaine cocaine was the first local anesthetic which was identified so no need to go into the other detail of this history there are two types of the local anesthesia la means local anesthetic amide and ester amide and ester amide more intense and longer lasting anesthesia while as ester are less intense and short duration so amide are more intense longer lasting amides are less intense and short duration it binds with the alpha 1 glycoprotein is not hydrolyzed by plasma esterase this is about pharmacokinetic not no need to go into the detail it rarely causes sensitivity there is higher risk of hypersensitivity so you can remember this point and this one last point more intense and longer lasting anesthesia less intense and short duration and higher risk of hypersensitivity with the esters as compared to amide so just classification and then maybe land amide type of the general anesthesia local anesthesia include longer acting and intermediate acting so longer acting include bupivacaine levobupivacaine etodocaine ropivacaine and ndbucan you can remember two three from this particular this bupivacaine and this uh, it etidocaine and ropivacaine intermediate acting most commonly used lignocaine lidocaine or lignocaine both are similar and it is most commonly used other are prilocaine mepivacaine these are intermediate acting and ester type here longer acting is tetracaine intermediate acting cocaine as you know that cocaine is the oldest local anesthetic and shorter acting are procaine chlorprocaine benzocaine these are shorter acting local anesthesia and uh, miscellaneous no need to remember other things we will discuss next time so that is all for today thank you very much thank you